Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about a Explode Righteous Fire build for 3.19. It's been heavily requested since I did not do one last league. I also apologize, I did not really make much updates regarding content to my jug. I got slightly burnt out and just needed a little break from all of the RF videos. They just attract a whole bunch of questions and I just needed a, a small break, but don't worry, I will most likely be making a jug guide for next league. So. With that being said, let me go ahead and talk about the Juggernaut for Explode that I am currently playing. So I'm going to go ahead real fast and jump right on into a map for you guys, explain a little bit about it, and then we'll jump right on into it. So here is a tier 16 waste pool currently. I'm just going to go slap this in. And for this interaction, we are currently using Assonance Gentle Touch, but there are three easy ways to incorporate Explode into an RF build either Assonance Gloves, Explodey Scepter, or Explodey Chess Piece. All right, let's get started, let's blast. So the difference between this and my regular RF build is this build usually will come with less damage, less survivability, however, explosions, which make it very fun to play. Now, some of the advantages I will say, uh, and some of these are kind of just like a joke, but uh, number one, it's a lot more enjoyable because if you, well, if you want to take a break from the regular RF build and just get some explodes, you could, you know, play this build or you could quite literally just use this as a template and play something else that you would like. Uh, it's really good at clearing weird maps like cells and dungeons, stuff with a lot of corridors. You don't have to run like linear or like very specific maps. There's just, there's a lot more variety you get when you add explode to your build because it quite literally just explodes into the next room, right? So that's what's very nice about this. Now, some of the other things I want to talk about are the different ascendancies you're able to play this on. Um, what I can tell you, without a doubt, is the following ascendancies are very much viable for Explode. Elementalist, Juggernaut, Inquisitor, and Chieftain. Now, the reason I brought up those four, uh, I don't really make Trickster RF content, so that's why I didn't really bring that up. But those four specifically, Inquisitor has the easiest time gearing, I would say, because... Just because the Inquisitor Ascendancy carries your life regen so much and not having to worry about mat mods in terms of like curses makes it a very easy thing to set up. Juggernaut will have... Oh, also it gets a, a good amount of single target damage but doesn't influence the explode at all, right? The Ascendancy for like dropping Consecrated Ground um, and making enemies take increased damage. Your explode's not applying the Conk Ground so that does not really help the explode. It just helps you with the single target still, right? Um, anyway, moving on, Juggernaut gets very good AoE via Endurance Charge Scaling and is very tanky. Chieftain gets very good Explosion... Oh, yeah, I guess and Jug will not have that much damage, right? Chieftain has very good Explosion damage, pretty good single target, but it's kind of like a mix between Elementalist and Jug, or Elementalist and... Jug. Yeah, Elementalist and Jug. Chieftain gets pretty, pretty good mitigation, okay regeneration, um, does not have as much damage as Elementalist, but still very good because of the cover in Ash. Elementalist will have the highest damage typically on most Elemental caster builds, right? Um, but will be the squishiest to run out of all of them, which is why I typically stay away from that. Sorry if that was a little bit confusing. I'm going to go ahead and pop up something that will most likely help you guys real fast. I also had to retake this video once, so that's why it's a little scuffed. So if you go ahead and go to my website here, ox.net, and you go to the RF FAQ and you just control F explode. How can I convert to explode RF? All right, so now we explain a little bit about the build. So some of the things required for this, number one, 90 to 100% fizz to fire conversion. So that would be taking a fire mastery for 40%, avatar of fire for 50, that makes 90. And then that's good enough. That's what I'm currently running. If you're chief, then you have access to easily getting 100%. Fan the Flames Cluster Jewel. Now, the purpose of Fan the Flames is Fan the Flames will give you the AoE Prolif. So now we have it where a target explodes and is dealing physical. 90% of that is converted to fire. Because it is considered fire, it has the ability to roll and ignite. But that's where Fan the Flames comes in. Next up, Flammability on Hit Ring. The Flammability on Hit Ring, it's important to note that in my build, I currently only have a one max curse between my Assonance Gentle Touch 
which applies uh, temporal chains, and my ring, which applies flam. I believe in this instance, it actually goes in alphabetical order. Flammability comes before temporal chains. It will always apply flammability. It's been like this now for over a year since I've been doing it. The reason you want to apply flam is the hit applies. The targets have lowered res. They have increased chance of getting ignited. If they die, then they are near a curse because uh, if you read here, it says non-curse auras you inflict are not removed from dying enemies, which means that that will kind of help the chain keep going, right? Also lowering the res, I think I said that right, helps with the damage scaling. Assonance Gentle Touch or Explodey Scepter or Explodey Chest. Herald of Ash. So typically to fit in Herald of Ash, I drop Skitterbots for it, which is why the build has a little bit less damage than the typical build. And then also you have to spec a bit on the tree. Um, this comes with a nice advantage where you can have any MTX that you would like. I have Unnatural Instinct on here, but this depends on your variant. So if you're like an Inquisitor or an Elementalist and you're chasing AoE, you can plug in an Unnatural Instinct here, or you can go ahead and try to get AoE via your Cluster Jewels, such as Burning Bright, Widespread Destruction, or even using Area Mediums to get more increased AoE. As a Jug, I have went ahead and traveled down here to the Endurance Charge Scaling. So if you count the 3% Endurance Charge AoE, or 3% AoE per node, along with unyielding, that is 9% AoE per endurance charge. So if I were to go ahead and just jump over into Blood Aqueduct real fast, you guys will see an example of what I'm referring to. So when I get hit, if you notice right now, my AoE modifier by default is 48%. This is not including support gems, this is just your default AoE. As I get hit, it goes up to 102%. That 102% is this, well, I don't really know the sweet spot, but that's good enough for me right now, right? So I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into some frequently asked questions that do pop up to try to avoid a little bit of confusion for you guys. <clears throat> so you do not need Legacy of Fury for this whatsoever. Uh, Legacy of Fury does not contribute to your chaining at all. It's only hitting what's basically inside your RF ring, maybe a little bit further, right? The reason I'm using Legacy of Fury is I have not crafted a pair of boots yet worth me replacing. Although realistically, it would be super easy. It would just be life res movement speed and then slap on, I think, Searing Exarch for, uh, Exarch for dropping Scorched Ground. The dropping Scorched Ground is solely for, you know, fighting an Essence, a tanky rare, a boss, you just Frost Blink on their face and, you know, it drops that Scorched Ground, right? Also, my ping is going crazy crazy right now don't worry about it um right so talking about some other things um in the previous version on my jug i was using tempest shield for shock immune well this character that wasn't going to cut it i was res starved i was everything starved so i i went ahead and found another way to basically change tempest shield into pure developments that was using the socket gems have 20 percent reservation efficiency that i have on my tower shield here now this has to be on a shaper shield and you do not have to do this. I'm just explaining what I did. And in here, I am running my purity of elements, my malevolence and my determ. And that basically made it so I could use an immortal flesh, which is carrying my regeneration until I get new boots. So that's kind of where that is coming in. Also having the shock, freeze, etc. immunity is very nice on this character. The chill immune especially is very nice. Um, I do have really good clusters that give me chill immune, but I need very specific clusters like fan the flames, right? So that's kind of not really an option for me. But yeah, that pretty much kind of covers everything that I could possibly imagine. Apologies if I screwed something up. I did have to retake this video, so it's a little bit out of order for me. For the rest of pretty much everything, you could follow my regular build guide. You can still use my website for understanding gear crafting, right? Pretty much all of that still applies, so I didn't really feel the need to make a full-on guide, just explaining the explode interaction. All right, that's pretty much about it. So, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Of course, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays now at twitch.tv pox. See you guys all later, and uh, I can't wait to make a jug guide for next league.